Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 348. Uh, each week um, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions or the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. A couple of the guys, or quite a few of uh, are um, in... Uh, Germany at the moment uh, at the, the Google uh, meetup for product experts, but uh, David Razam and I are here f for your listening pleasure. Um, David uh, is um, one of the UK's leading uh, internet uh, marketers. He's based in uh, West Sussex. Um, and you can find out more about David on davidrazan.com. All right. Um, we have a, a 14 questions for us to get through tonight, David. Um, let's hope we can do it. Um, our first um, question um, is titled um, Forwarding an Old Domain to a New Domain. It's from Wayne Davis. Uh, Wayne said, hi, everyone. I'm starting a new business and repurposing an, an existing website to a new domain. The URLs are identical uh, except their domain name, obviously. Um, but what is currently the best practice for forwarding an old domain um, to a new domain? Well, you should uh, you should do it you should use 301 redirects um you best practice is to do it on a page by page basis um so if you've got um if you've got mydomain.com forward slash my page then you should uh right redirect it to mynewdomain.com forward slash my page um, and so on and so forth. Um, as Georgie says, um, I noticed just scanning through here. Um, if you've got any um, any pages that you're not uh, you're not actually using when you when you come to set the new new site up, uh, don't uh, redirect. Um, as he says, inner pages to uh, to the home page. That's uh, bad practice. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, if you've got the same structure here and the same pages, then uh, life should be, should be easy. If it's a big site, it'd be slightly tedious, but uh, I think that's, uh, I think it's straightforward. What do you think, Jim? I think that's um, fairly right. Uh, of course, um, if, if you are familiar with uh, how regular expressions work, yet you don't necessarily have to uh, um, redirect page by page, but it's um, very important to, to uh, preserve the structure um, as much as you uh, can. Um, now, there was, um, um, there was a method that was um, you know, really uh, uh, impressive, and, and that was, uh, um, I can't think who it was that um, said this on um, Dumb SEO Questions way back when, but um, he, his suggestion was that um, you put the 301s um, in place and leave them in place until the uh, traffic stops running uh, uh, to the site. Um, anyway, I should have thought, I, 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 full, full of um, madness, I, I thought I'd be able to handle that, um, uh, David, but obviously not. <laughs> well, the, the, the usual thing is if you've got, if you've got two sites uh, and you're you're migrating them, um, you you will wait until you you don't see any uh, or you get very little traffic through the redirects, and then you can take down the original site. Uh, is that what you were thinking of? No, I, I, um, 
I can't even think of the name of the tag, the header tag. Um, anyway, oh, it, it'll come back to me. So the worst thing about getting old. <laughs> anyway. I'll, I'll get there one day. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, <laughs> the thing is that the, it, it's hard for people to understand because you look older than me. Ah. Uh. It's this long, white, Gandalf-like beard that I'm sporting these days. <laughs> All right, mate. Let's head on to number two on our run list. It's, it's from Rodrigo Buono. Um, the do cover pages work? Um, in other words, uh, with it, if do cover pages work uh, if you're not actually located there? Well. Yes, I, I, I'm, I, I talked about this with Jim earlier and I realised I didn't actually read the question, I only read the, the headline here. Um, it's, it's a bit like, does, uh, does content work? Does SEO work? Yes, it can do. Um, how good are your suburb, suburb pages? Although it does strike me that you're, you're always going to be at some sort of disadvantage to um, businesses who have decent content and actually are located there. Um, so it's it's how long's a piece of string? Um, have a go, but uh, if you're not located there, be prepared to be disappointed. I would say. Thank you, David. I think we'll call that one a wrap for then. Um, I'd like to thank people like Edward Jiang, uh, who's um, answered in the comments uh, there. Uh, he said, yes, they do, if you can rank them. As long as you're close to it and your customers are willing to travel there, then you're good. Um, yeah, okay. Let's roll on to the next one. Number three on our run list uh, from Saurab Rowat. Um, it's cleaning up a ton of pages with the 404. He said, we're noticing a ton of pages with 404 that are not falling out of the index. In this case, we're going to use the HTTP header for directive signals uh, instead of um, the meta robots uh, for uh, cleanup. Will it make the process fast? Ooh. Well, let, let me jump in while you're gathering yeah. your thoughts there, David. Thinking, yes. um, the thing is that a 404 it, it's not not a page it, it's a response and it's a service saying uh, i haven't got what you want and um so you know if you've confronted with, with a um, um a huge number of uh, 404s it is usually or could be the the, the result of another filing somewhere um because the the the, uh, the the 404 being reported is an indication that a page is referred to from somewhere else, but that page doesn't exist. So really your efforts are probably much better applied getting rid of um, that bad coding that is um, um, pointing to a page um, but your site doesn't actually contain that page. Uh, um, and, but um, uh, I um, uh, do agree with um, what you're doing, uh, not using uh, meta robots uh, for cleanup, um, because uh, in fact, the, the meta robots is, is probably 100% useless for, for that task because. Um, Googlebot, um, for argument's sake, needs to find the page 
to find all of your instructions on it. You, you might have an instruction, no index this page. If you're using Meta Robots, Googlebot can't navigate to the page. Um, Googlebot will go to the page um, if, if it's following a link saying that there is a page there. But um, if there is, if, if, if that happens, it's really just going to add another, another 404 to your error count. How about that, David? That sounds, that sounds sensible. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a big tick and a, a VG and a gold star. Thank you, buddy. Will we tick on to the next? Let, let's, let's go on to the next one. Yes. Okay. Number four on our run list is from Jim Christian on getting a phone number to show up within a search result. He said, I finally have a question and it's dumb. Is there a way to get a phone number to show up within an organic result and have a clickable phone number, um, like a site link? I've got a buddy that currently has his uh, own, has his phone number stuffed inside his title tag and it looks stupid. I'm figuring there, there has to be a better solution, like an OG tag maybe. Thanks for the help. Well, if, if this is a uh, if this is a local business, then um, if you can if you can get into the local pack, um, you should have a nice clickable phone link in that. Um, the other thing that uh, that pops to mind is um, some. Uh, some obscure piece of schema that I can't think of at the moment. Uh, I noticed that Micah says uh, FAQ schema markup. Um, it might well be that. There's always some form of schema that does something really obscure when you spend several hours trudging through the, <laughs> the possibilities. Um, I, I will uh, I will nod towards uh, Micah's knowledge there, but those two things would, would seem to uh, be the most likely answers. Excellent. All right, um, let's move on to number five, David. That's from Miller Sokil. He said, my email was hacked. Will it affect um, SEO? And Millis goes on to say, hi, all. My, my email was hacked and I inadvertently sent... Yeah. Sorry, what's wrong, David? Got to go. Okay, yeah. David did say he was um, waiting on some deliveries today. I'll read the read the the question for Miller Cycle and uh, um, David can uh, respond to it when he gets back. Um, Miller said, um, "Hi all, my email got hacked, and I inadvertently sent thousands of spam emails to random email addresses. Obviously, I tightened my security the same day, etc. But since then, I have noticed a fifty percent drop in my visitors." Um, my uh, questions are, one, does having email compromised affect SEO? Uh, and if so, two, will it bounce back with the passage of time? Apologies for that. That's okay, David. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did um, uh, read out um, Miller Sokol's question, uh, number five on our run list. Um, I don't. I don't see any point. Uh, any uh, uh, any way that this would affect his SEO? But maybe I'm missing something. But this is this is email. Um, it might bugger up your uh, your mailing list um, because people might want to drop out because you've uh, 
you've been spamming them um, and you might well find that uh, that your emails are um, find their way into Google spam list say so you won't be able to get through to Gmail um, emails for argument's sake um, but I would have thought you would be okay with SEO <coughs> with SEO Yeah, um, not, the 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 um, email and um, um, your uh, website are you know two separate parts uh, of uh, your domain records, um, but then 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 not uh, depend one's not dependent on the other. So it shouldn't be, but he's, he, um, it, it could be that um, they have, uh, if, if they managed to hack your email, how did they hack, hack it? Um, and uh, have they uh, also um, hacked your site? Um, they, they might have it um, um, conditionally hacked, in which case it, it only shows... Uh, the uh, spam links um, when uh, Googlebot or another um, um, robot is crawling it, um, but um, when um, the site owner or an, an ordinary user has a look, um, they don't see uh, any spam at all. So that, that's probably worth investigating too. Will we go on to the next one, David? Yep. My goodness, we're ripping through these. We're up to number six, almost halfway through. Okay, Jason Chong um, um, has a, um, a question. It's titled, uh, Avoiding Duplicate Penalties with uh, a Canonical. That was what I was trying to think of before the canonical tag, uh, David. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I, I'm glad I, I'm glad you sorted it out. Uh, <laughs> had I realised what you were go, going on about, I, I would have said canonical tag, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was a really good idea in in that. Um, um uh, he uh, if if you're going to transfer a site um you uh, on on the site you're transferring from um you set up canonicals referring to the the the, the counterpart page on on the new site and then you watch that for um um a while um and and until the um 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 uh, crawler like it, w when googlebot started going to the new site rather than the old site um you then set up 301s and um with the least amount of pain and loss um you, you transferred the site anyway ah, yes. yeah. I can see why, why you think that's clever yes that is clever mm. okay, okay. Uh, Jason Chong asked this question about avoiding duplicate penalties with the canonical tag. He said, I have an article on my site. Someone has reached out asking to copy the content uh, for their site. Is there a way for them to do so but set my page up as the canonical for the content to avoid duplicate penalties, etc.? cetera? Uh, yes, there is. Um, oh. Strictly, there's not such a thing as a duplicate penalty, of course, but uh, that's probably uh, splitting hairs. Um, sorry, yes, but you—you, you, I think I, I think I interjected. Did I? I, I personally, I, I personally, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't allow someone to to copy a load of content from uh, from my site and stick it on theirs. Um, um, no, <laughs> that's a personal thing. But uh, I, hmm. it's it sounds like it, it. It just sounds like it could be a, a load of uh, 
a load of problems. Um, but yes, I suppose you could you could ask them to to set up a canonical on on the page with uh, uh, with your your content on um, pointing back to the original page. Yes, you could do that. Um, but uh, as I say, I, I I don't think there's a there's a situation where I would uh, I would do that. Uh, sorry, that when I, that I would. Uh, by that I mean allow them to uh, copy my content. Yeah, I I agree, yeah. uh, David. Um, um, it, it, it's possible to do that, but the question is, would would you do that? Um, would you bother? Um, I mean, the whole point of being an internet publisher is to publish your work, um, not to give make things for other people to publish for you, despite what they might say about links and so on. Anyway, you know, the, the whole premise of guest posting is fatally flawed. Um, I, I just don't know why people think that it's a, it's a thing or if it ever was a thing. Um, okay, let's um, move on from there. We are now halfway through officially, David. Um, oh. Chris Green um, uh, said, posting reviews from another site. Chris said, hey, guys, we want to take get positive reviews about us from another site online and post them on our site word for word. Obviously, this would be duplicate content, but was wondering if there is uh, any way we can get around this. Uh, for example, um, make the content non-indexable, etc. Well... I, I think I would point um, the assembled multitude towards um, Richard Hearn's comment, which is more or less what uh, Michael Martin says as well. So, yes, I'll go down that route. Yep. Um, um, iframes, uh, uh, iframes stop. Um, Google what um, reading the contents. So, uh, and robots txt should do the same thing, but is not um, what well, do the same thing should stop uh, the uh, the bot um, reading the the content. But uh, as we know, that's only an advisory, not a um, not something that can be 100% uh, relied upon. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly sure. I mean, for nearly 20 years, uh, Googlebot um, um, refused to um, crawl uh, anything inside an iframe. Um, but I think I read somewhere not so long ago, um, if somebody like Richard Hearn was on board uh, tonight, um, he'd be able to tell us that or Maybe you can tell us, David, but I, I'm fairly sure that uh, um, um, Googlebot can read inside an iframe now. Ooh, I don't know. I'm not, well, actually, I don't know either. Um, <laughs> look, um, in, in general terms, um, advice for Chris, Chris, Chris Green. Is is this um, worthwhile? Is 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 it a, a chalice worth um, collecting? Uh, the well, the positive reviews are are good things. Third party, uh, third party. Um, um, third parties saying good things about you are always good things um you would have to have some more content on the page to actually get people to come and read it though of course um but hmm. suck it and see i don't you know if you if you manage to uh if you manage not to uh not to have a uh oh i don't i don't what am i talking about um 
I don't know what I'm talking about, Jim. Come and come and help me. Um, I okay. I think, as I said before, let's 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 go back to the Richard Hearn is is a a pretty good sort of information about peculiar bits of technical stuff that uh, I don't even begin to pretend to understand um, because that's not my bit of SEO. Um, what he's saying seems to be quite sensible. So uh, I think I'd have a go. Yeah. And uh, also Michael Martin is, um, um, Richard Hearn and Michael Martin is, um, um do so much valuable work uh, through the week um answering questions on our dumb uh, seo questions facebook group all right let's um call that a, a wrap we're on number eight on our run list it's from katarina lujak um when to allow crawlers 24 7 um it would be my um my contribution 24 7 um, allow crawlers 24 7 365 let's add that to it as well <laughs> yeah and uh, except on leap years it's, uh, some people want to you know cut down uh, their their um, crawling because you know it slows down their server well you know the, 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 the fix is not to stop Hello, Jim. Is that me or is that you? Um, boom, boom, boom. I have no idea what's going on at the moment. I don't know if I'm live um, and talking to the world, if the if the world is talking to, is, is watching, um, or whether I've just disappeared into some strange corner of the interwebs and I'm talking to myself. Um, Second, I'll, I'll I'll cut them and join them together. Okay, um, so we're dealing with uh, before we lost internet, uh, dealing with Katerina Lujak's question on when uh, um, to allow crawlers. Um, hang on a minute. Um, she said, hey, guys, here's another one. So I have a new site to optimize. Um, there's work on technical, mainly sorting URLs and then content. What do you advise um, to submit their request for crawling repeatedly, i.e. when I'm done with a, with a phase or um, when uh, a whole uh, tasks planned are completed? Mm. Um, 
yes i i you were saying something quite uh quite on the on the nose about um about allowing crawlers at your site all the time but i think this is um this is to do with whether you should be showing google that you're doing lots of work on the pages um because you're showing uh stages of uh of work um my own well my my approach to this is if i'm or if i and the client are going to be doing um a lot of work over a period of time rather than just a let's do it you know it's done today um then i like to do it on staging i like to have it all done um there's um i i'd rather not have bits and pieces and half completed work um live on the web um so if that's what the question is um i would say um don't do it live on the site do it on staging and then once you've finished put it up live um i don't know what the others have said because i haven't read well one thing the the others didn't say david is that um googlebot will crawl your pages on its timetable not yours oh. and, and it doesn't matter how often you let googlebot know um it um it, it it will come to your site when it suits googlebot to, to come to your site or you know whatever it's, it's doing at the time so really you know i, I wouldn't i wouldn't be concerned uh, about you know i mean even even if googlebot does respond to your uh, crawl request um even if it does crawl it it's not going to index it it's, it's not going to say oh jesus let's let's stop stop the uh, process of indexing the internet uh, because um you know uh, there, there, there's a new page heavens above anyway let's move on to the next david you would that be a good idea you having a beer um it's gin Oh, civilized. <laughs> got, got a thing over here in Australia. Um, they're um, everywhere. It's very popular. Every, all the gin makers and uh, like every, every street corner has got a gin distillery these days. You know, because China, yeah. China, China makes all this distil distillation equipment, and of course, uh, they, they have to sell it, and then someone has to buy it, and and uh, you know, um actually i shouldn't say it because they're they're, they're, they're uh, one of the big distilleries are clients of my son so i should shut my mouth before i say something wrong um <clears throat> i wouldn't drink any more not on not on this uh uh not not on this broadcast <laughs> well, i have to tell you that i had a g and t earlier on this evening it was very nice very Good. I, I hope it was a, a local artisan gin. No, 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 no. Okay. LD, uh, uh, LD. Um Actually, it was Irish gin um, that, that I got from LD. <laughs> <laughs> Irish gin. This, this sounds as if there's going to be a, a, a joke in bad taste coming up. But, uh, no, no. Look, if you happen to see it at LD, buy it because it's absolutely delicious. It's... it's uh, Made in Ireland, and, and it's got overtones of orange. And and if you, you put a slice of orange in it instead of lemon, oh, it's glorious. Uh, uh, overtones of potato. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this tasteful Irish joke. <laughs> let's go to the next, mate. Okay, this one from Michelle Corn on blocking at bad bots and rogue crawlers. Um, and Michelle said, does anyone have any instructions on how to block bad bots versus good bots? 
Um, spiders on analytics and or stat counter. Thanks. Um, yes, I'm, I'm not sure that there is, um, there is a way of doing this. Um, oh, I see. Sorry. I, again, I've, um, I've started this because without, without reading the damned question, um, let, let me stop and read the damn question before I put my foot in my mouth. Uh -huh. Yes, you can. You can filter out. Um, you can filter out some uh, bad bots, um, uh, and uh, yes, you can do that uh, within um, Google Analytics. Um, but you can't. Uh, you can't filter out everything. Um, but you can have a damn good go at it. David, um, Michael Martin has uh, also said in the comments, uh, in re responding to Michelle's uh, initial question, um, he said, um, um, I wrote a series of articles about this a few years ago. Here is the first one, and he thoughtfully provided a link. Um, so... I, I have a feeling that I might have read those. <laughs> I have a feeling I might have a, a, a link uh, ferreted away. Um, but yes, uh, anyway, that's by the by. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's. Um, uh, I hope that's uh, sufficient for you, uh, Michelle. And uh, let's uh, move on to the next. Uh, this one from Nikolai Kalachnikov. Um, Nikolai said, What should I be asking the SEO company? Nikolai said, Hello, hi, hi all. Um, we are using an SEO company for our business. Um, they have promised us page one on Google for our selected keywords within six months. We have completed the first two months with them. Um, they have um, uh, written one blog and a few descriptions on our website so far. My question is, what should I be asking the uh, SEO company? Um, reports on progress, backlinks, etc. We are new to SEO and want to know that we are getting a value out of them. What would you ask an SEO company after two months? Thank you all in advance. Well, mm, there's, there's, there's a reaction to uh, what this SEO company have promised and there's the answer to the uh, to Nikolai's uh, question: um, You've you've chosen um, a company that um, sounds like a load of cowboys. He says, trying to be gentle about it. Um, it's very difficult for anyone to promise. Uh, page one Google for your selected keywords within six months. It's no one, uh, no one controls uh, what other people are putting up on the internet. No one knows what Google is going to change in its uh, in its algorithm. In fact, nobody knows quite what is in Google's algorithm. So um, they've um, they've made a They've made a pitch for your business uh, with a um, with a claim. Um, they have presumably taken your money, or else there's no point in them uh, going through this. Um, and um, at the end of six months, they will probably disappear into the uh, into the ether. Um, you can certainly ask for reports on progress. You can certainly uh, ask them 
what you are ranking for and how and where where and what um, you can then say to yourself um, do you believe what they're saying um, because they may well say uh, we have got you uh, <laughs> on page one of Google uh, for these key phrases uh, but would you believe them um, I think this is a put this down to experience job. Um, I think you've got to find yourself a um, a white hat, honest SEO company or consultant um, who will have a um, believable set of claims for you. Um, you know, you, you, you say that this is, um, that you're new to SEO. Uh, it's a very bad experience you've got here. Um, but, you know, at the end of six months, who's to say? Maybe they, maybe they will get you uh, those, uh, those page one Google uh, positions. But they're showing all the signs of being a load of cowboys. Yep, I, I could put all of my advice in, in just one word. Run. <laughs> yes. Run as fast as you I can. That's going to be your 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 one word advice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, um, yeah, there is of course the uh, the view that if you wait for six months they may, may well bugger up your SEO um, to some extent. Um, and then you'll have uh, a load of putting uh, putting things right to be done before you can actually start doing anything positive with your site. Uh, that well, is, worry. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, these people could could um, blow you out of the water while they're attempting to put something on uh, page one um, of uh, any search result. Um, they, 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 they could be doing uh, stuff that um, you might never recover from. Um, but look, uh, anybody that promises you um, a page one position is just a, a crook. Just stay away from them. Just don't even go near them. We have the same problem. I, I see one of our leading SEOs lamenting the, the state of the SEO industry here in Australia. We have lots and lots of um, SEO companies promising page one uh, uh, of uh, Google. Just don't listen to them. Just run like hell. Anyway, let's go to the next one, David. Do you think? I think so. I think we should run. Okay. <laughs> All right. The James Pybus asks the question, full copy to subdomain. It seems strange. He yeah, said, this is new to me. Yeah, it seems strange. The website development company have said as part of their migration process, they will do a full copy of the site and add it to the subdomain in order um, to uh, maintain uh, backlinks and domain authority. Surely this is just duplicate content. Um, what do you think? Uh, I, he said, I've been asked to take a look at the, the site and this subdomain at the old website. Um, has been running at the same time um, as the new site um, for the last four months. Am I missing something slash going mad? Um, over to you, David. This sounds completely bizarre. Why would they do that? Well, the, the, the links um, on the on the pages, I, I guess. Um, but why why would they why would they put the content um, onto a subdomain as part of the migration process and leave it there for four months? Yes, I mean it is illogical. You're right. <laughs> um, my my brain 
Alex is going a bit ping at this. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, developers aren't SEOs like I'm not a developer. Um, I wouldn't hire me to, uh, to develop a website and I wouldn't leave SEO matters up to devs. Um, um, you may be missing something, James, but from what you're from what you've outlined here, it seems to be bonkers at best. I don't understand why they would be putting them putting the content into a subdomain. Yes, um, uh, well, as, as James said, he said, this is new to me, it seems strange. Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, your delivery is here, David. I'll read the next question while you're going. <laughs> All right, um, uh, James Pybus, I hope um, that's a, a, enough of an answer for you. This one from Graham uh, Southorn, national phone number or local phone number? He said, my question is, which is better for SEO purposes for a national UK franchise company? To have a single national phone number, e.g. 0800 or 0845, or only have the uh, local phone numbers uh, of uh, franchisees on the website currently the hq phone number is a local bristol number beginning 0117 i promote this phone number in calls to action on the blogs i write for the website the idea is that if customers ring hq someone will pass uh, on the lead to uh, a local will writer who are based all over the uk each will writer has their own landing page on which their own local number is published. However, the site seems to rank strongly in the Bristol area, although not so well outside it. An issue for a national business that wants to attract more franchisees and customers. Is this because the local phone number is used so much on the site that Google thinks it's a local company? Would instead a national number be better for SEO purposes? Um, or should no central phone number uh, be used uh, at all? Um, uh, grateful for any I only came back whilst you were halfway through. Um, please sing and do tap dancing whilst I read this, uh, Jim. <laughs> As always, Michael uh, Martinez is a voice of reason. Michael said, um, while you're gathering your thoughts, David, Michael said, uh, what would be the point of using a national number if local customers need to reach the franchisee or vice versa? What would be the point of having local numbers on the sites if local customers can only legally interact with the national brand owner? <clears throat> Don't think in terms of what works best for local SEO. Think in terms of what should we do to meet customer slash public needs. <coughs> um. Yes, it's. It depends, doesn't it, on what's going on. I, I think uh, what Michael Masters says is a good thing. It's um, it's down to um, what is it, you know, what do you want to do business-wise? Um, I guess if you if customers are going to have to interact directly with uh, with the local franchisee, then uh, a local 
telephone number that would fit in with uh, with GMB and everything might might make more sense. Um, but if you're if people are going to phone and have to talk to the national brand owner, who will then um, who will then allocate the the lead to a, a local franchisee, then that's the way to go. Um, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a big um, SEO issue. I think it's a it's a business issue, and I think we we do tend to get caught up in what's best for SEO when in fact we should be looking at another priority. Yeah. I haven't I haven't scrolled through what the ah there's Tim Tim Kappa he he tends to be the our our local SEO guru ah he's said more or less the same thing yeah okay let's um, move on uh, Graham Southall I hope you're happy with that um now eric m hoover here's one point he's a he's one to ponder feeling confused he said my electronics brand clients uh, us hispanic site um is a sub subfolder off their main us english subfolder occasionally it br or briefly it ranks for extremely bro broad terms like calculadora calculator um a user guide page living off a product description page for a cell phone is what ranks about a week ago they were around position nine and then dropped off the top three pages after a day uh, it isn't getting any real click-through ratio in in search console 0.1 percent or any real traction to be worried about but wondering if anyone has experienced similar and what advice they can give? I suspect, as uh, Michael Martinez says, that this is a small drop in the ocean. Uh, an electronics brand will have lots of different kinds of products. Um, and I think that... Uh, Worrying about calculators going up and down. Um, you need to have a look at the site. You need to work out where money is being made. Um, are calculadoras um, a major income? Have has dropping uh, from position nine to wherever it was um, actually had any impact? Um, I think that, as I say, I, I'm, I, I really don't, don't like fixating on um, one key phrase. Um, think about themes, think about products, um, groups, think about particular products, think about where you make money from, um, you know, okay, it's dropped to off the top three pages it may well come bouncing back in two days but um is it worth doing anything about it how much how much investment will it take to make it rank will you get your money back uh, put your money where you're going to get some get some return uh, rather than worrying about minutiae yeah, good advice, David. Okay, let's um, click on to the next. It's our last question for the night. Um, it's from Craig Anthony, who has asked a number of questions of us uh, over the years. Um, safe, transitions from, tra safe transition from HTML to WordPress. Uh, Craig said, I've transferred all data from HTML to WordPress. All of the images and text are there. I just need to make it look pretty now. My question is, do I need to take 
140 uh, pages from the old site and create uh, an identical site in WordPress with 140 pages to help ensure it's a safe transition. And then once it, that's gone live, um, I, I can then build a better version with less pages in a staging account, for example. Well, can I instantly go from 140 pages in HTML to eight pages in WordPress, as long as I 301 everything to the relevant places? Um, no, build, build, build the site, uh, build the site in WordPress, build your eight pages that you, you need, um, then 301 from your 140 pages to your eight pages, but don't 301 to the home page. Um, if you're, if you don't have a new page to redirect to, you need to be asking yourself whether you need to create a page to redirect to, or whether you, that is one of those pages that the old, on the old site that no longer has any re relevance. Um, if it has no longer relevant, if it no longer has any relevance, um, there's a good chance it's not having any, it's not getting very much traffic because that's a very good, uh, um, a, a, a very good measure of how relevant a page is in my book. Um, so if it's not getting very much traffic, don't worry about it, let it 404. Um, so yes, don't, don't, uh, don't bother to uh, to to build 140 pages and then mess about with it. Just do the the eight pages or the required number of pages and we are one it. Oh, and what about your um, uh, your your canon canonicalization, Jim? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I uh, I, I, I I'm, I'm not sure that. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that going from 140 pages down to eight, he's going to get the answer that he wants. But anyway, we'll see. I, I wasn't going to, to argue with you, though, David. <laughs> no, no, it's best not to argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's um, call that an answer for Craig Anthony and hope that he is happy with that. And... Uh, it's that time of uh, the night again, David. Um, is it, is it time to get my pee? All 14 <laughs> questions asked this week uh, on the Dumb Messier Questions Facebook group. Um, and uh, we thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, uh, first of all, I, I can't go without thanking uh, people like you, David. Um, and... Uh, uh, people like uh, Masataki Wasa and uh, uh, Tim Kappa, who would have turned up, but were they not at the, the Google Product Expert uh, meetup in uh, Germany? Actually, what they're doing is they're just going to Europe because uh, in a few weeks' time they won't be allowed in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and people like Michael Martinez. Uh, um who answered questions through the week you know who, who make uh, our responses so enormously valuable uh, we thank you we thank you from the bottom of our heart um we'll be back at the same time uh, next week um to do this uh, all again um but uh, until then um it's good night